Hey fellas, welcome back to part two of the privateer build. Build. I can't, I can never say that correctly. Build. Build. Anyway, in this exciting episode, we're going to deal with the front part of the nose section, getting that cut off, and dealing with the ball turret on the front. So let's get on with the video. All right. I wanted to give you a somewhat of an idea of how I'm cutting this. And this is kind of the same method that I used for cutting this piece. And let's get the instructions over here. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting out the nose section so I can implant this section in its place. And according to this, it's 17 millimeters which is, I guess, 17 millimeters from here to here. So I measured that out with my calipers. It looks like there's just a little section. Now, there was a real faint line that came up. So I assume that's the line that the resin maker was going by. So I measured it out, and that was the same distance that that line was at. So I just kind of followed that line with my tape. And how I'm doing this, instead of taking my Dremel tool what I've done, if I can find it here, is I'm using my razor saw. And the reason that I'm not using my Dremel tool for cutting this part out is because I want it to be pretty accurate and I want to have really nice clean cuts. With the Dremel tool, I've, I've found that the, you know, the plastic melts and you've got to do a lot of uh, sanding and, and uh, filing. But with the razor saw I can get a nice clean straight cut and not have all the damage. So basically I'm just going around with the razor saw and taking my time and just going along the edge of that tape. And it does take a little bit extra time with the Dremel tool I could zip right through this but you know you see right down here this little piece, uh, you know, I'm liable to break some stuff off that I don't want to break. So I'm just going slow with the razor saw. And this particular one is Hot Tools. And I like it. I don't have a little attachment for it. So I just do it by hand. And I use, usually use this to scribe panel lines. But it's got two different sizes of teeth. They've got a more coarse teeth. And then they've got some real smaller ones down here. So I'll take the coarse and just go along here, taking my time, not trying to press too hard, just taking a little bit away as I go, and cutting, and this way I should get a nice, even, smooth cut. With very little filing needed. Since I'm gonna, when I join these, I'm gonna have to fill in Anyway, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I want to I want to uh, cause the least amount of damage as possible while cutting these parts. Okay. Ready to yell timber, fellas. Oh, yay! All right, so I think the next thing I'm gonna do is clean this resin part up and clean all the the excess off, get it glued together and then try to mate it up. Once I get that excess cut off, then I can figure out if I need to cut any more or cut any more off here, and I should be good to go. It's kind of hard to tell the way it is right now, so I need to clean this up and then uh, <clears throat> see how it lines up. So, and that's next. Okay. Well, I've kind of got the midsection cleaned up, 
and I just dremeled it out and I sanded it and I tried to get it as straight as possible but it still may need a little bit of working but I figure you know once I get the actual parts on the inside painted where I can and the fuselage halves together where I can start mating it up I'm gonna have to do some more filling and sanding anyway so I can take care of uh, getting it all straight and lined up at that point and I, I'm also working on the front nose section now they didn't go together real well they were kind of kind of warped cattywampus and as you can see I'm using a lot of my uh, filler here which is my typical CA glue and pig, uh, metallic pigment so now I'm just trying to get them all straight and, and leveled up and uh, make sure that the curvature is correct. Now, I'm still going to need to take off some here and maybe some more here. I'm not sure. I, I don't want to really take off any more here if I can help it because I've got this little section. But uh, it should made up just like that. And you can see it's a little bit off, but I didn't really do any more sanding on this. It's, it's going to be not really straight so I'm gonna have to take off some more material on the resin part and hopefully once I do that I can get it to made up pretty well so that's kind of what I where I'm at uh, so I don't want to take off too much but then again once I get this on it's going to uh, require some more sanding and stuff so again it's it's kind of a do a little bit now get it uh, in the ballpark and then once I get it on then I can I can get a, a final good fit to it so and I'm gonna have to rescribe all these raised panel lines anyway so I'm not really worried about taking off some of those but I'll show you how I rescribe my panel lines on on a kit like this where they're raised uh, in in, uh, in another part and, that, and that's actually pretty simple so that's where I'm at I'm gonna get keep working on this and trying to get it in the ballpark and uh, get ready to start painting the interior parts. All right, I think I'm in a good stopping point on the nose section. As you can see, I've filed out the windows and I put in the bottom window. Now this, this bottom clear part, once I cut it out, it's a lot narrower than this circular section right here. And from what I've seen on the real things is it's all kind of it all kind of like merges together and there's not a lip like we see right here. So what I did is I laid this down and got in the position and then just took a pen and outlined and then I've started uh, filing away some of that material all the way up so it kind of matches the curvature of the glass. And that's about the only way I, I can think to to handle that. And uh, I'm still not still not done with it. I think it looks serviceable right now, but I, I will try to try to uh, file that off just a little bit more. But I may wait till I actually get it on the plane because I'm going to have to do some more filing on the side. Because if we see here, I didn't take any more any extra material off of this or this like I thought I was going to have to, and the reason is is that it matches up almost perfectly top and bottom but I do have issues on the sides where it's a little wider so since I've got a lot of material along here what I plan to do is once I get it made it up and where I want it then I can come in here and sand down and smooth out the sides and make them fit flush up against the the kit part so that's where I'm headed with that. The ball turret, I've got that all cut out and it seems to fit in there pretty well. The, I, oh darn it, where'd I lose it? Hold on a second. Ah, oh, there we go. The ball turret, I cut out the, the vacuum form. Damn it, son of a bitch. I cut out the vacuum formed clear part and I always have a little bit of difficulty. Now these, they're, they're real thin. If you've never worked with vacuum formed parts, 
these are these are really thin but they're not I mean there's some some give to them unlike your regular styrene clear parts these don't have the tendency to crack like those do now I spent probably an hour and a half two hours getting this to where it will mate up and I've still got a little bit more I thought maybe I was gonna have to keep this lip but I think I may have found another solution <clears throat> where I can get rid of that lip and get it just like the uh, the actual the actual turret so it fits in there nice and snug so I may just put some styrene inside of here to form a lip to keep this from going all the way in so it'll sit flush with the rest of the the outside of the resin part so that's what I think I'm gonna do hopefully it'll work out <laughs> I've only got one chance because I've only got one one clear part so uh, let's see this sits up nice and snug I've rounded this off let's see if I can get it on the correct side so this will sit in here just like this and I think that will be good to go right there, fellas. That looks pretty good to me. Okay, I wanted to finish out this video showing you what I'm doing or what I've done with the ball turret. Now, I did get the glass to where it will fit and there's not going to be any lips. And it should fit in there quite nicely. It took a long time and a lot of patience and a lot of careful sanding and filing to get it. But I think it's going to be okay. There might be a couple little spots where I'm going to have to fill in with like testers glue, like right along here. Testers like window glue. And that'll fill that in pretty nicely. And you're not going to notice any gaps. Uh, on the inside, I put in a seat. And I don't know if you can see it real well. But the conversion kit comes with what I believe is a seat, and it's back in there. I also took some plastic card and cut some circular shapes, and this kind of acts in, uh, helps keep this from going inside of the, com the uh, compartment there. So it kind of acts as a little lip on the inside to keep my glass where it needs to be. And it also allowed me to mount the kit guns, which I found just a little bit easier to deal with. They're not quite as brittle as the resin. And the holes match up with the holes that I drilled on the, the glass. So then I can just insert the, uh, the barrels right in there. So that allowed me to get a nice strong bond for the guns from styrene to styrene. <clears throat> and then I also put just a couple little... Uh, pieces of plastic card that I kind of cut the shape along the bottom here and along the front to kind of mimic, give you a, a, a somewhat of a representation of some of the pictures that I've seen of the, the turret and to kind of make it look a little busy. I also put in like the, the back part of I don't know, what I believe to be the seat and I may throw some seat belts in there as well <clears throat> with so that's uh, that's pretty much it for this, and it uh, fits in here quite nicely. What I'm going to do is I'm going to end up painting all this and uh, painting it the interior green color, I believe. And then uh, hand painting the guns. And I've also got, and I always save clear parts from other kits. And let's see if I can find it here. I want to always seem to lose stuff. But I, uh, here it is. What I did is I saved a clear part, or I took a clear part from my uh, leftover sprues from another kit, and I just kind of rounded out this window glass, and that's going to act as this part right here, which I assume is some kind of aiming device. So once I get this painted around the edges, then I'll just put that in. And uh, I think that will be adequate for this front turret. So that's where I'm at. And I'll get this painted up and uh, show you some pictures of what it looks like in the end. And we'll be uh, good to start on some, some of these other turrets and side blisters, which are going to be, uh, be a little bit of a chore after this one. 